Hey friends, it's Akidiris. I'm gonna be sharing with you guys what I think were the worst punishments throughout Japanese history. Because you know what? Anyone who's gone through that rabbit hole of just torture methods throughout any country, we were barbaric as human beings, okay? Because I always hear people saying, oh, I wonder what it'd be like to go in the medieval times. I wish I could live in the Viking age. I wish I could... No, you don't. You could be doing anything and somebody would accuse you for, I don't know, witchcraft or just because you didn't look like the rest of the people. They would commit some of the most heinous acts that were justified, but today, we're gonna go dive into Japan because I tend to talk about Japan a lot on this channel. So if you've ever wondered, oh, I've always wanted to be in the Edo period, that would might have been nice if you were Japanese. A lot of these things that I'm gonna be showing with you guys are pretty wild, so stay tuned in for that. So imagine you are living in ancient Japan and you are being held prisoner. One of the very possible torture methods that will be used on you is being boiled alive. This is pretty straightforward. Japan isn't the only one that had boiling their prisoners alive as a torture method, but the reason why I'm putting this in here is because there was one specific person that I would like to call the Robin Hood of Japan. And this man's name was Ishikawa Goemon. He stole from the rich and gave to the poor. Literally, it's like the Robin Hood of Japan. The only difference is that with the ending, it ended up with him and his son being boiled alive after trying to assassinate the leader at the time, Toyotomi Hideyoshi. It was a failed assassination attempt, and so after they were caught, they were boiled alive in public. Cut to many, many, many generations later, if you find yourself in Japan, you may be lucky enough to stumble across an old traditional bathtub named after the man that was boiled alive. And this specific bathtub in Japan is called the Goemonburo, which translates literally to cauldron bathtub. Nothing like being relaxed and boiled alive. So this is a bathtub that is essentially enough to fit one person. And from what I've seen, some are really good looking and some of them look like this. I don't know why Wikipedia chooses this specific photo because I would not even put my foot in this type of bathtub. That looks horrifying. Imagine going through like the worst torture of your life and then your country generations later names that bathtub after your death. Now, given everything, Ishikawa, just like how we view Robin Hood in Western culture, Ishikawa Goemon is actually deemed as a, basically a hero in Japanese tales. Kind of like a little fun fact in there. Also, he's referenced in a lot of other types of media nowadays in Japan. It's just really sad that he had to be boiled alive, but uh, everybody's so creative. Okay, so let's say you've avoided the sentencing of being boiled alive. Well, the next possible option is that you could go through what's called Ishidaki, which translates to stone hugging. This was a torture method in the Edo period where the prisoner would essentially sit on their knees that was also laying on top of a very rigid wooden board. Their hands would be bound and tied behind their back and on top of that, as the name suggests of stone hugging, someone would come by and place a huge heavy stone on your lap and just layer it upon layer it upon layer it. In the Salem Witch Hunts, this was also a method. Maybe you guys have seen the movie The Crucible where that there's that scene where they try to torture the guy by having his entire body spread out and tied. And then in the meantime, they just layer the rocks on top of his body. You will say it, Corey. Speak, man. We cannot relent. What say you, Corey? Ma, wait. Lay on. That's on the front of the torso, but this method in Japan just requires the knees. This sounds really painful. I'm really glad it's not a thing anymore entirely. And what I mean by that is that as of today, researching for this video, I found out that uh, the BDSM community actually brings this type of torture to life. So. Look, I don't want to advertise anything. I'm literally just trying to give you guys some like fun facts here, but I found that people on things like Etsy recreated the rigged board for people that are into kinks. Stone hugging has now turned into a king. Everybody's so creative. Okay, you're still a prisoner in ancient Japan. You've avoided being boiled alive and you've avoided getting stoned. Well, let's hope that you don't get sentenced this one because I honestly think this is probably the worst way to go. And it's probably the most famous one I think that people on the internet have heard of. It's called bamboo torture. Bamboo torture is a form of punishment where the prisoner would be laying down, tied up with his limbs stretched out. And not only that, they would be laying on top of sprouts of bamboo. Now bamboo grows very fast and so 
essentially what is happening is while you're laying there, the bamboo will eventually just grow and pierce through you. I think this is the worst one because not only does it sound absolutely painful, it also sounds like it takes the longest. I know bamboo grows fast, but don't grow that fast. Here's the thing though, there's no definitive proof that bamboo torture was actually a thing. This was a claim made in World War II when the Japanese were committing so many different types of tortures and for some reason bamboo torture was mentioned in there multiple times, but there was no proof that anybody actually went through this. However, that doesn't mean it doesn't work because in 2008 the Mythbusters actually did an episode just to see if this could work and they confirmed through their experiments that yes, bamboo can indeed grow at a rate and in a way that can pierce through your body. So speaking of bamboo torture being done in World War II, I think I should probably add in here World War II, specifically a program called Unit 731. So Unit 731 was a Japanese research program during World War II that conducted horrific experiments such as infecting subjects with plague, giving subjects frostbite, and cutting people apart while alive and unsedated. You know what's crazy is that there is so much proof of the tortures that happened during World War II in Japan and yet today there are still nationalists that deny it ever happened which is just it's just crazy to me and I'm not just putting Japan under that umbrella I'm putting like multiple countries you literally have 100 year old photos caught in 4k well not really in 4k technically but you literally have photos of all of this happening and the fact that you still deny it is so crazy to me it's one thing to fake an image of like someone being like at a party or an event or next to someone controversial but then it's another thing of having photos of literally somebody chopping the head of somebody else like, I, I don't understand how people can just deny that that ever happened, but whatever. Okay, so let's say that you've pretty much avoided every other sentencing mentioned up until this point. What is the last possibility that I have listed here that you could probably go through? Well, it's called Anatsurushi. Anatsurushi translates to hole hanging. The victim was actually hung by their feet upside down and lowered into a hole full of excrement. Not only that, just to add more to like the grossness factor of it, but a cut would be made in your forehead by the temples in order to let the blood pressure decrease in that area. So this specific punishment is a legitimate one that's confirmed in Japanese history that did happen. And one of the victims was a Filipino that is now deemed as a saint named Lorenzo Ruiz. And at the time, Japan knew that the Philippines was being taken over by the Spanish and they thought that the reason why the Philippines was getting conquered was through religion. So all of a sudden they see Lorenzo Ruiz with three other priests and Japan gets really worried that they're there to just also conquer them through religion. So what did they do? They imprisoned and tortured Lorenzo Ruiz along with the three other priests and they went through a multitude of different tortures including this one, the whole hanging. So one of the reasons that these men were being tortured was because the Japanese actually wanted them to give up their faith in Catholicism. And how to make this point come across was that while the victims were being hung upside down by their feet, their left hand was actually left free to signal the guards to not only stop the torture, but that they were willing to give up their faith. Lorenzo though was completely willing to go through the entire torture process without refusing or giving up his faith in Catholicism. He even told the guards saying, that they could kill him in any way that they wanted and that they could do whatever they wanted because his soul belongs to God. So Lorenzo died two days later after all of the tortures. He was then cremated and then to add more insult to injury, the guards then took his ashes and threw them into the sea of Nagasaki so that Christians wouldn't be able to take his ashes to keep for themselves. Okay, so I ask again, uh, you are a prisoner of ancient Japan, and let's say now you've just been given the grace to choose how you wanna go. If it was up to me, this is just my answer. I think maybe I'd rather do the stone hugging just because even though as painful as it is, it doesn't sound like you'll necessarily die because I mean, if you're just sitting on your knees, and the stones on your legs. It sounds like that I have probably better chance of living and just living as paralyzed, which I'm sure I could probably learn through that. That's just me, because if I'm going through bamboo torture, that sounds like the worst one. That sounds like not only is it slow, but it's just super, super painful. Being hung and put into excrement is just, gross, disgusting, and torturous. And then being in World War II, no one wins in that. Like they can just choose whatever they want to do to you. And being bought alive, 
I, I don't want to be boiled alive. <laughs> so I would probably rather do the stone hugging. Luckily, I don't think I have to go through that. But I passed the question on to you guys of to choose however you want. So you do that. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.